Hello friends, this video on thermodynamics part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 8. Now, see the internal energy change by heat. As I told, the internal energy change can be done by heat and by mechanical work also. And please note, once again, I mentioned the constant volume part here because uh, when you talk about the internal energy change, it has to be constant volume. And I'm stressing on this because it's very critical as uh, things become confusing. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the in internal energy change with the with, by the heat. So as I told, we can also change the internal energy of the system by transfer of heat from surrounding to the system or vice versa, right? Without any work. So if you see, there is no work. There is no work. No work. Only transfer of heat because when I say heat as I told heat is not a state function the path function when I say heat I mean heat transfer right because for a given system I can't tell heat I had to talk about heat transfer and this happens only when two systems are not in equilibrium when they are in equilibrium and when the process stops the heat transfer doesn't take place heat transfer takes place only when the process is going on right and this exchange of energy which is nothing but uh, heat is result of temperature difference as I told this is heat or heat transfer now since we are looking for heat transfer we can't do with adiabatic walls as we have you done last slide we have to use thermally conducting walls because we have to talk we are talking about heat transfer so for transfer of heat we need a thermally conducting walls we'll take thermally conducting walls here so in this case if you see uh, the matter can't be transferred, uh, uh, can't be exchanged between the system and surrounding, but the energy can be exchanged. So, if you heat this with uh, fire, Bunsen burner or something, anything you can use. And let's maintain constant volume because uh, when you talk about internal energy chain, the most critical thing is the constant volume. So, we have to maintain constant volume. So, what I've done is I've closed the lid and the volume is constant and let's apply the external heat. So in this case, when there is no external work, there is, there, there is no churning of this or there is no transfer of uh, I mean, uh, electrical energy by putting some rod inside. The only work is, uh, there is the only uh, thing that is changing the internal energy is the heat transfer. Right? There is no W. Because there is no W, only thing is Q. Please note here, in the same system, if I supply uh, heater if I put inside this system only some heater that will be W that will be the, the word and that will be the electrical energy change but if I supply some heat from outside that will be the Q because the heat supply okay so I am supplying some heat there is a heat flow because there is a temperature difference and when the temperature is the same the heat will stop but since the temperature difference is there the heat flows and that heat flow is the sole reason in this case for change in internal energy. There is no work component here, right? Because there is no work component here. We are not churning it. We are not doing anything. No chemical reaction inside. The only component which is uh, uh, changing the internal energy of the system is the heat pump, right? And here also the sign convention is this heat is positive in the heat is transferred from surrounding to the system. Same convention, if system is getting heat, if system is getting heat, the internal energy system will increase. So change in internal energy is positive. But if, let's suppose there's a cup of coffee and you put in the, your room, it cools down because the heat is transmitted from the system, the coffee system here, the coffee cup, to the surrounding, that is the room. So in that case, this whole thing loses the internal energy. In this case, Q is negative. Okay, Q is positive, that means system is getting the heat. Q is negative, that means system is emitting the heat. Now, we have done, uh, we have seen the internal energy change by heat alone, one case, the last slide, and the work alone is last to last slide where we did the churning and we have seen the experiment by Joule. Now, we'll do both. And again, I'm just trying to mention the, uh, the when you talk about internal energy, you talk at constant volume. So I mentioned this 
once again. So we'll take this example where we'll have the internal energy change both by heat and work. So in that case, if you sum this, because in the first, the last to last slide we got, delta u was nothing but work adiabatic. When there was no heat change, there was no heat flow. In the second uh, scenario, in the last slide, we saw the uh, change in internal energy was nothing but heat supply. So if you add both, because both the things are involved here, we'll get this equation. Delta u is nothing but q plus w. And this is my first law of thermodynamics. If you see, this is my first law of thermodynamics, which says that energy of an isolated system is constant. That means if, if you are not supplying any, if you are making Q as 0, W as 0, delta U will also be 0. And it is also nothing but law of conservation of energy. That is, uh, energy can neither be created nor can be destroyed. So, and whatever uh, uh, you are transmitting energies, that is nothing but change in the energy. So this is nothing but the first law of thermodynamics that it says that energy can neither be created nor can be destroyed. The internal energy of a system, isolated system is constant. The change in the internal energy of the system is nothing but Q plus turbo heat plus work done supplied to the system or done by the system. And as I told, I had told that uh, delta U was my state function and heat was my uh, path function and work was path function. This is something I have told once in the I think in, in one of the videos in the same series actually. So let me, let me, I, and I told, we'll explain this more in the next few slides. So let me explain this. As I told that heat is nothing but heat supplied or heat flow. And at a given point of time, I mean, it changes. It, it happens only when two uh, systems are not in equilibrium. Once it is in equilibrium, it, it stops. Right? So I can't say that the heat is this joule for the system. It is nothing but heat flow. Similarly, work is also a path function because it all depends from if you are you know, walking from here to here, the work depends, right, which path you took, right. So these two are path functions. The internal energy state change is a state function. So if you see, let's suppose that uh, we got an internal energy change. We have this formula of 50 joule. So this change I could have got from 50 uh, joule of heat and no work. I could have got this from, let's suppose, no heat and 50 joule of work. Or I could have got 25 joule of heat, 25 joule of work. I could have got 10 joule of work, 40 joule of work. Sorry, 10 joule of heat, 40 joule of work. Or I could have done this way also. I could have given uh, uh, some 60 joule of work, uh, heat, but I mean, uh, system did some 10 joule of work. So it overall it became 50 joule. I mean, I gave 60 joule of heat, system did some 10 joule of work, so overall it becomes 60. Or system did some 60 joule of work, but uh, 10 joule of work was dissipated in the uh, surrounding, total is 50. So you see in all these scenarios, the change in internal energy is 50 joule, right? But these are different. So it can be 50 plus 10, 0 plus 50. So you can see this is I don't care which path it took, whether it took this path, this path, this path, it is, I care only about the change in the energy. So that is a state function, correct? So as I told, my delta U is equal to Q plus W, I'm repeating it once again because of critical uh, equation, the first law of thermodynamics. Here if you see, my W is a state function as I told just now, I gave this example where the delta U was uh, constant, 50. And Q and W are path functions. So delta U depends only on the initial and final state. It doesn't care about the path which it follows. Correct. But Q and W are my path function. Heat is my path function and uh, work done is also path function. So now, if you see it till now, we have been dealing only with the mechanical property in our life. We talk about volume, pressure, temperature. But now we are talking about thermodynamic property. If you see change in internal energy delta U is a thermodynamic property. 
mechanical property can be volume hey okay. or pressure m pressure u is a u is a internal energy is a thermodynamic so if you see the difference here what is the difference both are different but there is one difference that we can measure absolute value of mechanical property absolute value of mechanical property can be measured for example i can find the absolute value of pressure temperature volume for a given system for example i have this flask i want to find the absolute volume of the light, water in this i can find it i want to find temperature i can find it. but thermodynamic properties such as if you see the internal energy i can't find absolute value can't find absolute I can only rely on change in internal energy, the relative value. Right? So it's very impossible, almost impossible to find the absolute value of thermodynamic property. We generally deal with the delta change, delta u, that is change in internal energy. I will talk about more things here, enthalpy, entropy, we will talk about those things. But, um, the point I'm trying to drive here is, when you talk about thermodynamic property, you talk about the, we don't talk about the absolute value, we talk about the the change value, right? The delta values. We'll take one example. We have to express the change in internal energy when the first case is no heat is absorbed by the system surrounding. The work is done by on the system. The second is no work is done on the system, but Q amount of heat is taken out from the system. And the third is double amount of work is done on the system and Q is heat supplied by the system. Let's take the first one. Let me number it one, two, three. Let me take the first one. So, if you see delta u is nothing but q plus w. This is my formula I've got from first law of thermodynamics. The question says, I'll let me write here only delta u is equal to q plus w. No heat is absorbed by the system from surrounding. That means q is equal to zero. Right? No heat is absorbed by the system. Work is done on the system. Work has some value. But the question is, is it positive or negative? Now, work is done on the system. That means system is getting some work. The internal energy will increase. It has to be positive, right? Because system is not doing any work and becoming weak. Somebody is doing some work on system and making system stronger. So work will be positive. So my delta u will be q plus w, q is 0 plus w, w is plus w. So total will be plus w. And since if there is no heat absorbed, the process is generally adiabatic. So we can say adiabatic. Because if there is no heat absorbed by the system, there is no transfer of heat between the system and surrounding. The process is called adiabatic, so you can write if you want. Let's take second part. Again, same formula, Q plus W, delta U. So let's find Q and W. No work is done on the system. That means work done is zero. Q amount of heat is taken out from system. That means Q has some value. Now the question is, is it positive or negative? Now, it says Q amount of heat is taken out from system because you are taking out from system, system is becoming weaker. So it will be negative. Correct? Why negative? Because you are not giving heat to system, you are taking out heat from system. So total W, your change in internal energy will be uh, Q plus W, Q is minus Q here, right? Plus W is 0, that is minus. Let's take third example. W amount of work is done by system. So work has some value. Is it positive or negative? System is doing work. System has become weaker. Internal energy will decrease. So W is negative. Q amount of heat is supplied to the system. System is getting heat. System is becoming stronger. Q is positive. So total delta U will be Q plus W. Q is minus Q. 
and w is sorry q is plus q and w is minus w so it becomes q minus w. hope you understand this the fine convention so the system is getting heat q is positive because system is internal energy is increasing if system is emitting heat system is becoming weaker so q is negative if system is doing work system is becoming weaker work done is negative if somebody is doing work on the system system is becoming stronger internal energy is becoming is increasing so work is positive thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again